2020 has been an incredible year for blockchain technology adoption. We've seen the explosion of decentralized finance or DeFi, institutional adoption of cryptocurrencies, and a ton of critical developments in blockchain infrastructure. All of these are super important pieces of the puzzle when it comes to blockchain adoption. And in this video, I wanna talk about some of those things because a lot of critical developments have happened lately that are gonna set us up for a big year in 2021. So before we get into that, if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, and smash the like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to learn how to master blockchain step by step from start to finish so that you can you know, land a high paying job, become a freelancer, you know, build your own project, then head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. So 2020 has been a huge year for blockchain adoption. You know, we've seen DeFi take off like crazy. You know, the total value locks at an all time high of $12 billion. MetaMask has achieved a million monthly active users. You know, that's the main Ethereum wallet for accessing blockchain based applications. And we've seen decentralized exchange volume peak at a billion dollars per day. So all these different things are signs of blockchain technology achieving a product market fit, where basically it's serving the needs of a target audience. And that's been a huge catalyst for the growth that we've seen this year. So a lot of these things are consolidating around financial use cases, because that's what blockchain seems to do best, at least at this point in time. And I think we're going to see a continuation on that trend towards bigger growth in financial use cases. And I'm going to talk about that here right now. And so we're in order to understand how this works and sort of see where this space is headed, I want to pull up this chart to kind of explain how technology adoption works in the first place. So this yellow line here is basically the trajectory of the technology adoption. So you can see it's a gradual curve here that, you know, eventually levels off depending on how many users come into the space. And so you can see like at the very beginning, it's just innovators and then it moves to early adopters and then early majority, late majority, and then like the laggards. And so I definitely think we're here somewhere in this early phase. It's hard exactly to say where for sure. If you have an idea, leave a comment in the comment section below. But what you can see what happens here is basically as more users come into the space, that's what causes this curve to go up. And ultimately, it's real value and use cases that bring more users in. And we've seen a lot of those things already this year, but there are a lot more new things that have just happened recently and are about to happen that I want to talk about. They're going to move this needle forward to see this curve, you know, move all the way to the top. So in order for that adoption to really mature, there are three key factors that are going to help that, right? So one is technological innovation. The other is consumer adoption and also institutional adoption because, you know, we need more people to come in to move that needle forward. And they're going to come in the form of consumers and also institutions. And then they need good technology to provide the value. All right. So let's kind of go through some of these and talk about recent developments that'll do this. All right. So the first one is Ethereum 2.0. So you know, this is the new and improved version of Ethereum right now. It's going to get it really fast and ready for prime time. I made a lot of videos on my channel about Ethereum 2.0, how I think it's going to launch this year. And I think we're still on track to do that. All right. Just this past week, uh, we saw some news that, you know, their last test net was successful and that they expect the uh, deposit contract for phase zero of Ethereum 2.0 to launch very soon. And once this is ready to go, the beacon chain should come up uh, really shortly after. And so we don't have a firm date on this yet. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel to find out because I'll be releasing a video on that as soon as I know for sure. But this is such a big deal because it's going to get Ethereum, you know, ready for prime time. And I even heard Vitalik Buterin, you know, the co-founder of Ethereum say recently that uh, it's realistic to think about Ethereum 2.0 actually achieving, you know, 100,000 transactions per second. And that's going to get the blockchain ready for prime time so that it can become really fast and scalable and really compete with, uh, you know, traditional financial technology. So we've also seen some big developments in consumer adoption lately. So, you know, of course, we need to bring more consumers in for this technology to really flourish. And PayPal and Venmo just announced that they're going to offer cryptocurrency in their applications. So you can buy crypto with these two applications is my understanding. And then also the other big deal is that they're going to allow purchases. And this could really streamline cryptocurrency usage online because there are so many merchants that already have PayPal integrated with their checkout systems. And that'll make it that much easier for people to just pay with cryptocurrency online. And so I think it could be a massive on-ramp for uh, other consumers who don't have a Coinbase account yet or maybe a Binance account and aren't familiar with using an Ethereum wallet like MetaMask, for example. So we'll see how far, you know, PayPal and Venmo go into crypto. Uh, who knows if they'll like get into DeFi or anything like that, or if they'll offer any kind of high interest savings.
things like some of the other Ethereum wallets do. That remains to be seen. But I do think this will tap into a, a large number of new users. All right, so the other part of this is we've seen a lot of institutional adoption of cryptocurrencies uh, with really just in the past few months. And that's another really big piece of the puzzle. You know, like in order to move this needle, some of these adopters aren't going to be individuals or consumers. They're going to be institutions who are buying cryptocurrency and using blockchain technology. And they can actually move the needle faster because institutions often operate at much larger scale than individuals. So if they're buying cryptocurrency, they're typically buying way larger quantities than any one person. So, you know, if a really big institution gets into the space, they can really push things forward for a few reasons, which I'll talk about here in a second. So we've seen a handful of pretty big institutions buy into cryptocurrency in the past few months. So one of the earliest ones was a micro strategy that purchased 425 million worth of Bitcoin. And this is a big deal for a lot of reasons. You know, one, they're a publicly traded company. And second is, you know, this made a pretty big wave in the news, which gets the attention of a lot of other institutions. Okay. And so another example is Square. Where? And they bought $50 million worth of Bitcoin. And they're also publicly traded, which is another big deal. So the reason these institutions are such a big deal, like I said a second ago, is because they can move the needle faster for a few reasons. So the first one is that any institution that gets in with a large amount of money can, you know, move things forward faster than any one individual can most of the time. But the other big reason is that they have powerful influence over other institutions. So basically, whenever somebody like MicroStrategy does this and makes a big deal about it, and then Square does it and makes a big deal about it, you know, other companies watch what other companies do, and they have powerful influence to influence other people to do this. And what they're doing is basically t buying Bitcoin as a cash reserve for their business. And you could draw a few really positive conclusions from that. Number one is that they take blockchain technology and cryptocurrency seriously enough to consider Bitcoin as a reserve asset. And so they might be doing this as a hedge. But one other big thing to think about is that, you know, some people might be doing this because they expect that investment within their business to outperform other parts of their business. So it, you know, it could be a bet on crypto and where it might be headed in the next couple of years. And because these institutions have such powerful influence over others, you know, we can definitely see a wave of more people following this trend and doing this. And so all these are really key factors for blockchain adoption. And I think everything that I just talked about are really good examples of this and are pieces of the puzzle that are going to help move this space forward because I think it's going to be a really exciting next, you know, six to 18 months. And so if you want to understand this idea more about like, you know, how technology takes off and like look at past examples of other technology that has grown like this, then I've got a book recommendation. Uh, it's called How the Internet Happened from Netscape to the iPhone. And it'll actually trace like the growth of the internet in their really early days all the way to, you know, Web 2.0 and the mobile era. And I think it's a great book for understanding how that happened because you can see, you know, the different events that took place and then also draw parallels to the events that are taking place now so you can kind of see very similar patterns and then forecast, you know, what's going to happen in the future. And so if you're looking for a good book to read, then I highly recommend that. All right. So another thing to think about is as this adoption continues, what does that do for, you know, the entire blockchain industry? Well, it basically means that demand goes up like crazy because, you know, if consumers are demanding this stuff and then institutions are demanding this stuff, it's just going to create a greater need for people to build this ecosystem. And that's huge for blockchain developers. I mean, before a lot of this stuff happened this year, even at the beginning of the year, you know, LinkedIn already named blockchain as the top skill for 2020. And after the growth that we've seen this year, there's no reason to think that won't, blockchain won't be at the top of the list again, right? And that's great news for you. If you've been watching this channel, you've been thinking about jumping into blockchain you know, as your career, there's a lot of good signs of this space moving forward. And I'm also seeing stuff all the time on my Twitter feed, like people just posting like, hey, we need a blockchain developer for this. We need a blockchain developer for this. And I just retweet them. I say, you know, who wants a blockchain job? They're not like paid sponsorships or anything like that. I just see them and want to amplify them so you guys can find out about them. So if you want to see more like blockchain developer jobs, job postings. You can definitely follow me on Twitter. All right. And so that's, you know, what I've been seeing this year. That's where I think we're headed uh, over the next, you know, six to 18 months. A lot of really good stuff happening. And now I want to talk about a couple of projects that I've seen pop up lately that I think you all find interesting. I don't think they're necessarily like super critical for blockchain adoption, but uh, they're just ones that are cool. And I thought you should know about. So the first one is Circles, and this is a universal basic income or a UBI experiment on the blockchain. So how it works is uh, you it works on trust. So basically you add other people to your circles, all right? And you trust them, they trust you, you receive your circles. And then based on that trust ring, you know, you can use those circles, you can pay with them, you know, just like you would with a normal cryptocurrency. 
Uh, so this is pretty cool. If you want to learn more about this, I'll put a link down in the description below. Uh, I've been kind of playing around this myself and I thought you all find this interesting too. So the next project is Unstoppable Domains. So this is a way to register a blockchain based domain name that you can use for a bunch of different purposes. So um, and let's say you have a blockchain address like an Ethereum wallet, for example, that's some big, long, crazy you know, string of characters. Well, you can create a human readable name with Unstoppable Domains. You say like, you know, my really great name and you can find a dot crypto domain for that. But the really cool thing is that they just released a feature for uh, Twitter verification partnering with Chainlink. Okay. So now you can uh, use your Twitter handle to verify your unstoppable domain. And that way you can add some additional, you know, social proof to your Ethereum address and lots of other blockchain based addresses like Bitcoin and others. And so the last project is, you know, my own projects. It's a little bit of a shameless plug, but don't forget the yield farming masterclass is today. So this is the uh, fictional apps. Uh, juicy swap based off the popular sushi swap application and so if you want to learn how to create your own real world yield farming app just like sushi swap then i can show you how to do that today uh with the yield farming master class there's a link down below for you to sign up i'll show you how to set this app up you know how it works how to deploy the smart contracts live to a blockchain front end website everything all right, so that's a look at where we've come this year in 2020 in the blockchain space. Some really critical things that have happened for blockchain adoption, where I think we're headed in the next six to 18 months. So it's going to be a crazy ride, I think. I'm super excited, and I hope you are too. So if you want to jump on this blockchain trend while it's still early, then how can you get started today? Well, you know, you can go to my YouTube homepage, find any of my uh, free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those videos and you want to take the next step, uh, you know, I can show you how to build a real world blockchain app from start to finish so that you can, you know, land a high paying job, become a freelancer, you know, build your own project. Just head on over to adaptuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right. So that's all I've got. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.